all across Gilanor, safes have appeared because, yes, safe cracking is out. Now, unfortunately, this update is a bit of a disappointment to me because, you know, it's always exciting to get, like, a whole new training method for a skill, especially one that had very limited diversity in training, like Thieving did. It was pretty much just, like, spam-clicking stuff with very little exceptions other than, like, mini-games, which have their own issues. So it's nice. Now, it's still a pretty active thing. Like, it is no nothing like Elder Trees, like how they described it. As Elder Trees, you know, you click once, and you can wait, like, five minutes sometimes um, without filling your inventory or anything, but you still got... You still got XP coming in and stuff. These, it's like... It's maybe a, a minute per safe, and then you have to run somewhere else. It's It's not the same. And they're not in, like, places where you can switch to, like, pickpocketing right after. At least most of them. Maybe some of them are. I've not looked at all the locations. Anyway, we're going to talk to this guy. Hello there. What do you do? I'm the trainer for safes like these ones. They don't look like they make take much training. Already hard. No, I train thieves to open them. Want to hear more? With pleasure. You'll come across safes like the ones next to me in a few places. They've often got portable valuables inside. The fatal flaw of safes is that their lock mechanisms are really loud. If you listen, you can hear the tumblers clicking when you get them in the right place, but I'm sure a thief of your caliber will have them open in no time. Although without a stethoscope, you, may, you might find it harder to hear the tumblers clicking on more intricate safes. You see, there are different difficulties of safe that'll test your thieving abilities to increase in degrees. Got all that? I think I've cracked it. What's the loot bag for? When you loot safes, you'll automatically swipe the contents in the bag. Loot bags make stuff easy to carry, less suspicious, and they're incredibly fashionable. You got any more questions? Um, that's all, thanks. Goodbye. Alright, yeah, there's not much of a tutorial here, and you can't even try it out on this safe, which is a bit disappointing. But yeah, this is how you get a free stethoscope, at least. Um, there is... Now, the other disappointing thing with this update... Actually, I don't know if I ever said the disappointing thing at all. I think I was talking about how it's a training method and stuff. Anyway, I'm getting mixed up, but anyway, the disappointing thing is the reward shop, because they had described it as being, you know, like, the Aquarium or Memorial to Guthix, which have, like, all these really cool perks and stuff. The only real perk they have here is just being able to put the lockpick and stethoscope on your tool belt, which is nothing like the Aquarium or Memorial to Guthix. I mean, it's nice, don't get me wrong. It'll be nice to never need a lockpick again. Not that I need them very much. And I don't really see myself doing this training method because I am, you know, already at the point where I pretty much just want to do Pyramid Plunder for the Black Ibis outfit and then do the uh, Elves for uh, Amazing Money, which we'll get to that in a little bit as well. Yeah, there's consumables, but, you know, it's just this and that and that. And the thing is, like, I would rather have this just, like, added to, I don't know, an unlimited teleport on the master thing, because I think it's a limited right now, and it's one of, like, 5,000 that they've got. And then these, the thing about these is that it's just really probably not worth the trouble of getting them. Like, I think the safe cracking itself can be pretty good XP if done actively. But, uh, I mean, when you got the elves, you can AFK. Do you really want to be active training in safe cracking just so you can go do the elves a little bit faster? I'm not sure. And then these loot bags just let you go longer without coming back here to turn in the stuff for points and XP and stuff. Because you get, I believe you get some XP for actually doing the safe and then you get more XP for turning it in. And we can, actually, and we will go do this right away. Go over to the Grand Exchange, because I am a Premier Club membership this year. Maybe not next year, I don't know, with the prices going up. I imagine the price of that will go up, and I can't necessarily afford it. But anyway, we're going to claim... There we go. We got 500 Pilfer Points, which would let me get the Medium Loot Bag, but honestly, the only thing I really care about is getting the lockpick, so I'm not going to spend those points. I'm going to save them so I can safe crack up until a point to when I can do that. Now anyway, we'll go ahead and go down here, but first 
what am I doing? I'm turning invisible. But now while the safe cracking update was a little bit of a disappointment to me personally, because I was looking forward to the perks mostly. I was mostly hoping for something of any use to pyramid to uh, pyramid plunder or elves that you know wasn't a consumable you had to buy with points. Oh, this is going along well, surprisingly. The other types of kebabs are not, so... Yeah, but uh, thank you, kebabs. I think because they're dropped by, like, desert strike worms or other desert-related slayer monsters. I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, I'm collecting those now, apparently. At 5 GP each. But anyway, let's try out a safe. We'll see how long it takes. This is the lowest level type safe. So, yeah, you get 5 XP... Or uh, just checking, and it happens pretty constantly, so that's a nice little thing. That that flash there, I think, is when you click to make it go faster. But otherwise, you will automatically get the thing eventually. Let's see, there we go. We got it. We got 400-something XP plus my bonus XP. And if you just keep waiting, I'll try to click on it. I've not really tried the active clicking. Oh, sometimes you just get it anyway, so that's a thing. And there we go, we got 8% bag filled. It feels like it's a bit random, I'm not sure. I feel like I got 6% another time, but, you know, it maxes out at 100 no matter what, so if it varies slightly, you'll still get there in a similar time. Yeah, that is how you crack a safe. But yeah, then after that, you have to run all the way somewhere else, so it really doesn't match Elder Trees that much. It's way more running intensive. But they're kind of split into different categories, which have different ranges of levels. And where am I going? I'm talking and not paying attention to where I'm going. I should probably go ahead and load up the actual page on this so I can talk about it in a bit more detail. Unfortunately, we cannot access all of the saves because I know one requires, uh, I think, the Curse of Arav, which I'm relatively certain we haven't done. But we can do this one. There's another one that requires uh, tier 5 um, reputation in, I think, the Merchant District? or No, not the Merchant, the Imperial District in Minifos, which I think we do have. I don't have that on my main, which is really annoying, because he could do all the others. But I've been holding off on Minifos because they said they were going to be increasing the rates, so I'm trying not to do it, even though it would be really nice if I could actually go do it, because like, I want to go do woodcutting and stuff there so that I can uh, get the, like, they have the bugs and amber and stuff. I want to get through those and use woodcutting for that before I get up to the higher levels of woodcutting where I'd rather be doing, um, I don't know, crystal trees or something. Or once I get the lumberjack outfit. That's the other thing is I do want the lumberjack outfit before I train woodcutting, just like I want the mining outfit before I go too crazy with sarin stones. But we will see how that goes, because... There is a, a lot of stuff to do to get to those points. But I might prioritize some of those things. Might or might not. I don't know. A lot to think about. But what else? What else? I was talking... Alright, patch notes. They did some interesting patch notes. I actually missed the opportunity to show you one of them. Which is they added a back door to uh, Lumbridge Castle, like Old School has. Which is a nice little thing. It's not overly useful in RuneScape 3 due to the abundance of teleports. But it's better to have it than not, and there's definitely been one or two occasions where I've thought I would like it in this game, so I'm happy to see that added. Just a little nice thing. Um, what else? Oh, um, we're not there yet. I think it requires level 98, but the Miler Elves, the uh, Dungeoneering ones, when you pickpocket, you just automatically get Dungeoneering tokens now, which ironically I think would have been a really good perk for the uh, Aquarium-style thing. But they just gave it to us, which I won't complain because uh, that was always really annoying. You know, I like getting the tokens, but in what situation would you ever want to save up those things? It was just to fill your inventory, and it wasn't very fun. So I'm glad that they did that. I think they're also working on potentially... Oh, I missed it. I was actually going to do that one. But it's kind of hard to talk and do things that require paying attention. I don't know how picky it is about the timing on that either. Yeah, that we're 25% full. We can do this one. Hey, I was actually looking up... Loking? Yeah, sure. Loading up the safe cracking guide that we have here on the internet. So I can tell you a little bit about the locations, because 
I don't have them all memorized. I just kind of know what the ones I did on my main were earlier when the update came out. Because for once I was actually prepared and actually got some idea of how this thing works. So I could do it properly. And my internet is being a little weird. There we go. Okay, so yeah, we got miscellane, which requires 62 thieving to do these ones in this general area. All right, so we got these two. It's time to teleport out. Um, after that is the Curdian Desert ones, which, you know, that has the Tier 5 Imperial District reputation on one of them, which is a bit annoying if you don't have it. Did I say that it requires 69 thieving and gives more experience for the uh, lock progress and actual opening? I don't know if the higher ones give more uh, loot or not. I would assume maybe it makes sense to me, at least. After that is Asgarnia, which you know is like Faldor, Port Serum, etc. Um, you have to go inside the Black Knight's Fortress for that one. Which is not a particularly hard requirement, but it is something you have to think about, because you have to have some items to get inside there. Um, we're not going to be doing all these higher ones, we're just going to mess around with the miscellane ones. Which I have gone too far for already. I'm supposed to be going and robbing the wise old man. Um, right, after that is Kandarin, which is like Ardoin and stuff. No special requirements there, just need 83 thieving. Now, I assume that these are the sets, like, because they always talk about running, like, laps and stuff, so I assume you're supposed to do these groups all together and then go turn it in and not really, like, do multiple sets together. Um, right, got one safe here. You will notice there is a safe icon on the minimap as well. That's been pretty useful for me finding some of them. So, yeah, Kandarin is level 83 thieving. And then after that, there's... Three locations that are classified as hidden, which is 90 to 96 thieving, so we can't even do all those without boosts. But that is the one that requires Chris of Arav in Zemergul's fort, as well as Xanaris, which Lost City is not a particularly hard quest. And then the Rogue's Castle, which is in the wilderness, I do believe. That one way up at the top, I think. I don't know. This There's like a couple different things I think that have the Rogue title on them. I... Try not to get them confused, but it can be risky. But yeah, those ones uh, give the most experience, obviously, by far. I don't know what the experience rates are like. But in some, like in that one, you get four safes in Zemergul's Fort, two in Xanaris, and three in Rogue's Castle. So it's fewer locations, but it's still a similar amount of uh, actual safes compared to other locations. Up we go! Alright. Um, where are they? There they are. This is where the minimap is useful for finding them. Right, what else did we have on the patch notes? Oh, right! Um, to the Elite uh, Relica task set, they added uh, teleports to... Well, on the boots, to uh, the Relica marketplace. Just unlimited teleports, which is really nice. I'm glad, you know... Last week they added uh, extra awards to the Evil Dave quest, and this week they're adding extra awards to the um, Relica Diary. I'm really glad they're actually adding rewards to old content, because I think that's something they miss a lot. Like, for example, they add a whole new training uh, a training method for thieving. I kind of would have liked it if they'd added some small little perk to the camouflage outfit related to safe cracking. Because that's kind of, I think, a problem with this game is that once something comes out, it's kind of feels separate from the rest of the game. Unless they actually put in the effort to merge it with everything that exists. Like, now we have safe cracking and Minifos. But, you know, we have, like, pickpocketing chests. They've existed in the game for as long as I can remember. Why couldn't they put some of those in, like, Minifos or something? You know, just things to fill the world and give you reasons to go to places. Because as it is, you know, when something comes out, it's pretty much just a new content there. In, like, in Minifos, you only really had new content. They don't take old training methods and squeeze them into new areas so much, or rework rewards to work in such a way that would benefit the new areas. And I think it'd be useful to design the content around that. I also think it'd be useful if I wasn't invisible, but, you know, 
it's some kind of glitch, I guess, related to me wearing this outfit that I've just never noticed before. But yeah. So it's nice to see them adding updates to older content, and hopefully this is a theme that continues throughout this year, because I would definitely be up for that. Okay, who is it that you steal from in Edgeville? I can't even remember. I really can't. Is it the general store? Upstairs in there? I don't know, it's been hours since I did this. Uh, yeah, it was the general store, though. I hope I haven't missed one. It's definitely possible I've missed one, and we'll have to backtrack to figure out which one I've missed. Because there is an actual purpose to doing all of these. I'm not just trying to fill this bag up. I mean, I want to fill it up. When I turned it in with my main account, I got 77 pilfer points from turning in the small bag. It's not an amazing amount, but... I mean, it doesn't take overly long. It's been 15 minutes, and I've... Almost done all of them. We're over halfway full on the thing. Okay, if I, like, take off some of this... Well, I, oh, I stopped being invisible already, did I? Wow, people are really selling Ugg Thinky kebabs today. I like it. It's nice to have an item I can actually collect. It's crazy. Hopefully it doesn't stop selling. Once people realize, oh, someone's buying them all for 5 GP, maybe we'll start... Selling them for 10 GP and see if he raises his price. It's like, pro tip, I won't. I'm already happy with my collection. Um, right. There's a weird thing about this castle that I realized while doing this, which is that literally the only way to get to the roof, which is like a major part of the castle, is through the king's bedroom. This is the only way to the roof. I mean, look at all this stuff that's up here. You got the treasury, you got these training grounds, you got cannons, all this stuff, including this entire tower, only accessible through the king's bedroom, through a very convoluted method. It just seems a bit silly to me. I, I think they should probably install a door here. I don't know. But anyway, I have no idea if this room was accessible before or what, but it is full of treasure and we are going inside. Now, annoyingly... I believe you have to keep clicking pick lock on this, and it has a really high failure rate even at 99. So that's a bit tiresome. But nonetheless, there's two safes in here. Three safes in here, I mean. I saw the third one, right as I said it. So we'll go ahead and pickpocket these three saves. It's not pickpocketing, but, you know, I'm I'm distracted or something. But anyway, uh, what else was there? All oh, right, and they added a game clock in the lobby. Which is nice, because, you know, sometimes I'm in the lobby and I kind of want to know, oh, is it about to uh, be time for this thing? Because I do kind of want to get into the boss massing thing. I've been to a couple masses on my main over the years. Not not many, I literally mean a couple. But uh, I think it would be a good way to get kills, at least, on some of the bosses that I don't see myself ever really fighting, like the... Calfight King, I don't see myself ever truly fighting that. Unless I, like, somehow became head of a bossing clan, which would be a bizarre turn of events for sure, as someone who, um, does not boss. At all, really, you know. I've got plans to kill the Calfight, not the Calfight, um, I mean, I struggle with the Calfight Queen soloing it. Hey, look at that, we got a little thing that's worth 10 pill for points. I think maybe these things were what was originally going to give the perks, was that they'd probably be rare and, you know, actually get turned in for something. Kind of like how you get those little bonus items for the aquarium. Hey, I didn't know about that. But yeah, we get an achievement because we've done all the miscellane ones, and that gave us a whole 88% filled. So we could head back to, say, Lumbridge and go open those two, and that should fill us up. And I assume they've probably filled back up by now. It'd be a bit silly if they hadn't. But yeah, getting a medium clue scroll is nice. I'm actually a little bit behind. I had expected to have more clue scrolls for um, next month's clue scroll episode, which is, you know, potentially coming out either today or tomorrow um, if I get done with it. But I want to have more clue scrolls in each category. And right now I've got more easy and more medium not by a huge amount, but, you know, more than I had last month. But I have way less in uh, hard and one less in elite. So I need to get to work on that tonight and actually doing the clue scrolls. 
this month has been a little bit weird. You know, I've been killing mummies, I've been killing warped tortoises, you know. I've just been all over the place in training and not really getting clue scrolls as much as I thought I would originally. But I did make a discovery, which is that doing the capers, the one that gives you the better, uh, better loot from low-level pickpocketing, that is the key to um, being able to pickpocket hams without dropping items, because it, once you have an easy clue scroll in your uh, inventory, it will stack. But only, I believe, if you've done that, because I tried it before and it didn't seem to work. So that's really weird and not at all logical in any way, but knowing that it works is really nice. It means I'll probably make it standard to have, like, 25 me easy clues, not medium. But yeah, I'll probably make it standard to have like 25 easy clues every month just to uh, see what we get. Now that I know I can just go down there and spam click, at least after the first one. You have to get to the first one, because there's no guarantee that you will get it uh, in time for your first inventory to fill up. And you also get stacking iron and coal from them, so if you want to maximize your money, you can do that. And you can also watch out... The uh, doing that also adds uh, slayer staves to uh, their drops from pickpocketing, which are worth like 15k each. If they actually sell for that price, I don't know. I don't think mine have. I forget how many I got. It was like less than 20 for getting 10 clue scrolls. That'd be a good amount of money if it did. Yeah, I got two of these. I only got one on my main account, and it wasn't even this type. They've got like 10 different types of things. That's interesting little thing. Right, no, we, we don't do that with this guy. I'm still not used to this. And having this door close all the time is a bit annoying. I kind of wish they'd just get rid of it, honestly. Why do we need a door there? Alright, so yeah, we got 20k XP, 39k gold, and only 75 pilfer points for us. Apparently it's a little bit random. So now we have 575. So we could go ahead and run over here and be like, oh, let's do this thing. I don't know why these didn't go through. I guess you have to hand them in separately. Where's the guy? Oh, there he is. So yeah, we can glance in here again. So yeah, if you really wanted to do this, you could instantly buy the medium loot bag if you've got Premier Club membership, which uh, I'm not sure about buying this. I definitely don't see myself getting either of these unless they were like a completionist requirement, but I do not believe they are. This, however, I do want. Just because, and you know, this is probably something I'll work for eventually, but much less priority than this. I really hope this actually works in like quests and stuff, because there's a quest where you have to steal a hairpin for a lockpick. I wonder how this functions with that, because we've not done that quest, have we? Or did we? I don't remember doing that quest on this account, at least. So that's a thing there. I'm trying to think. There was a lot of interesting patch notes this week, but... The ones I mentioned were like the main ones that affected me and made me happy. So uh, I don't think there's anything else I'm trying to remember. But yeah, something else fun is that they're giving me a 75% off discount on one month of membership for Iron Kebab. So uh, I, th I don't know if that's like an Iron Man deal they're sending out to all the Iron Man because the only other person I heard about getting it was... Uh, Someone on Reddit who had a dead hardcore Iron Man who got that email. But I assume it's just people who haven't played in a while or something. May or may not be Iron Men. But I'll probably be doing that, you know, in a day or two and have a month of that. So that'll distract me for the whole of May. But I don't know. It's possible I might at some point start doing like Iron Man status update videos. Not very often because I don't plan on focusing on that account too much, but... You know, it'd be fun. I got a little more freedom on that account since I don't have to show myself questing all the time. I actually do quests. I think that account's done a couple quests. This one hasn't, honestly. Like, it had done one piercing note back when they had the free membership. But anyway, let's try to figure out how to hand these in. Do we just, like, use them on him or something? No. Do I just have to do fence items? Who do I give this to? I don't actually know. It's interesting. Let me see here. I will look on the safe cracking guide because I didn't bother to turn these in with uh, the stuff. Huh. 
Where does it say? They can hand it be into a Darren Lightfinger, apparently. That is just inconsistent. wonder why they did it that way. Um, safe cracking. I've got some items. I'm not going to read this. Oh, you can ask for coins? I wonder... So you can get 10 pill for points or 37 and a half K. Obviously I want the pill for points because, you know, I'm trying to save up for a lock pick here. There we go. So now we have 595. Not bad. You know, I'll be doing this in my free time. You know, we got a whole lot of ones. I suppose I'd probably be better off doing the Candoran set, which has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine safes spread out through like Ardoin. Camelot and Yanil. That's probably going to be a decent XP rate if I had to guess. I don't know, so I'll probably be doing that, but uh, unless it gives good clue scrolls, I'll probably have to start off working on my clue scroll collection tonight because that is my main goal for today. But yeah, so after this, of course, the next two episodes will be quests as usual. Um, very likely I will do. Uh, What's it called? What is it called? Darkness of Hollowville is one of them. I would consider that a very likely thing because I do want access to Berg Day Rot Ramble. That is the big thing there so that we can officially start going for both the uh, Lumberjack outfit and the construction outfit actually, both through that same mini game set, which is nice. Other than that, I don't have any big idea on what the other one would be. I would guess I might do Fermentic Isles, just because I I don't know if trying to go to him will start the quest or not, and I do want to be able to go there. There is the potential of me getting an elite clue in there, and that'll be a problem, because I don't want it to be yellow without us just doing it. So that is probably a another highly likely one, if not this week, then next. And other than that, you know, Fairy Tale 3 is looking more and more... Um, useful to me just with the amount of quests we've gotten done now it's like certain ones are moving up and of course as i've been saying for a long time as a first resort still i need to do it i just keep finding more important things to do unfortunately and you know it'd be nice to get through the cave goblins at some point but uh not like super important in the same boat and we need to make progress on the sea slug line just to get the uh I think the next Damonheim uh, aura, which would be a nice thing, right? And uh, no idea what quest is coming out this coming month, so I don't know if there's any requirement I would want to do. They have been tight-lipped about what it is all about, so I have no idea if we'll be able to do it or not when it comes out. We will know when it happens, but all I can do is, you know, keep doing quests and hope that I can do it. Anyway, I think that is all for this week. Um, looks to be an interesting month next month, at least, which I guess it's the first now, isn't it? Yeah, today is May 1st for you guys. For me, it's still the 30th, or uh, not very long in Europe. But uh, an interesting month, not a particularly great month for me, because the big update is Solak, which, you know, a group boss that at best you can duo. It's not something that's really for me. I don't have anyone to boss with. I myself am a boss noob with very little interest in spending my whole life bossing. So, yeah, I'm more on the uh, passive side of playing. I don't want to have to be actively paying attention all the time, all day long. I like multitasking. You know, I like being able to click a tree and then go browse a website or do a little programming or something. So, yeah. But the nice thing about Solak coming out is that it does mean that the devs that were working on it will be freed up to work on more interesting things to me. So that'll be nice. Hopefully they take a little bit of a break from bosses. Focus on some other cool things. Because I know there's been some updates that have been held off on due to updates like Solak. So that'll be nice. I just noticed I've had this stupid thing messed up the entire episode. So annoying. But anyway, yeah. So I'll see you guys next time with a quest of unknown decisioning. Yes, that's the proper word for that.